on the day that happened to be my birthday, there was a brief gathering in the cabinet room lasting for less than 10 minutes, during which people I work with kindly passed on their good wishes. Of course, for some, it is a hanging offence. Understandably, it's what they're on earth to do. Labour's Sir Keir Starmer. This is the first time in the history of our country that a Prime Minister has been found to be in breach of the law, and then he lied repeatedly to the public about it. Britain deserves better. They have to go. Bojo must go. But what do you say? Meanwhile, in other news, we're there as a Ukrainian family finally makes it to safety in the UK. In a quarter of a mile, turn right onto Bath Road, A4. If we were sleeping, we would sleep dressed. Same for the children, so that we could run out and hide. And in other news, hunt for the gunman of Brooklyn and back to the UK, the bombshell story. Pretty Patel was warned of the air travel chaos after she sent Trout staff to Dover. Later in the show. On your radio, on Global Player. Turn right onto Bath Road, A4. Leading Britain's conversation, this is LBC. From Global's newsroom at 7 o'clock, Boris Johnson and Rishi Sunak have insisted they want to get on with their... Continue on Bath Road for three quarters of a mile. The Prime Minister and the Chancellor have issued full apologies for resisting calls to resign. These people in Liverpool have told LBC it's time they quit. If you're the rule setter, follow the rules. People couldn't even say goodbye to their loved ones who were dying. It's just a complete and utter insult. I think it's the height of hypocrisy. When you make rules, you should follow them. And they've been caught out. Mr Johnson's wife, Carrie, also received a fixed penalty notice over the same gathering, a birthday celebration for the Prime Minister at number 10 in June. June 2020. Tory MP James Dudridge, who's Boris Johnson's parliamentary private secretary, has defended him, speaking to LBC. Downing Street is a frenetic and busy place, a place of work. It is very different from going away from your place of work and attending an event that would have been wholly inappropriate. That's not what's happened. The Metropolitan Police have still found him guilty uh, and issued a fixed penalty notice. Uh, he's apologised for that and, and paid the fine. In other news this morning, the US president has described Russia's actions in Ukraine as genocide for the first time since its invasion. It has become clearer and clearer that Putin is just trying to wipe out the idea of even being able to be a Ukrainian. We'll let the lawyers decide internationally whether or not it qualifies, but it sure seems that way to me. Ukraine's president, Volodymyr Zelensky, has praised Joe Biden's remarks as true words of a true leader. Vladimir Putin has promised that his country's military operation will continue until what he's called its full completion. Security for New York's mayor has been stepped up after a mass shooting in a subway station left more than 20 people injured. Police say they've uncovered concerning social media posts after yesterday's attack in Brooklyn, which isn't being treated as terrorism. They're searching for 62-year-old Frank James. Another vessel operated by P&O Ferries has been detained by the Maritime and Coast Guard Agency. Officials found a number of deficiencies with the Spirit of Britain, which can't set sail until the issues have been addressed. P&O has replaced staff with agency workers. Chelsea have been knocked out of the Champions League. The holders beat Real Madrid 3-2 after extra time in their quarter-final second leg in Spain last night, but they lost 5-4 on aggregate. In the city, the FTSE 100 will reopen at 75.76 after closing down 41 points yesterday, and the pound buys $1.30 and €1.20. LBC weather, rain gradually clearing Scotland, but the far northeast will stay dull, damp and chilly. Sunshine and scattered showers elsewhere, feeling warm a high of 18 degrees. In 300 yards at Huntercombe Roundabout, take the first exit onto Huntercombe Spur heading to M4, London. Unlock exclusive savings on hundreds of products in store and online. Excuse me, excuse me. That's my advantage card. He's a bit excited. Because I'm bursting with savings. Tell him how they get them. I'm going to simply sign up and start saving. Look. I'm exit the roundabout onto Huntercombe Spur. With price advantage, only with your Boots Advantage card. Boots with you for life. Subject to availability online at most boot stores. Keep left at the fork. In a quarter of a mile, merge onto M4. Investigation, of course, which has now found him guilty 
he will or he has paid that fine we'll look at that in more detail but also let's get in and around the key constituents obviously starting with the pms in uxbridge boris johnson says he's going nowhere but the people who voted him in in his constituency think that's right i'm lbc's rachel venables in uxbridge and i'm lbc's pamela tical in richmond to hear what rishi sunak's constituents think of the party gate fines in other news and involving other senior conservative politicians pretty patel warned more than a month ago about the looming wave of travel chaos after passports to Trollstar was sent to deal to Dover, sent to deal to Dover to deal with the migrant crisis. So yet again the Home Office, and in this instance, yet again the Home Secretary in the dock. We'll look at that in more detail. Hunt for the gunman of Brooklyn. We would not allow New Yorkers to be terrorized, even by a single individual. The NYPD is searching for the suspect at large, and we will find him. Later in the show, exclusive interview with Lord David Frost, the man who signed the Brexit deal. He'll be coming and tell us the stories, his reaction to the latest stories, of course, around the Conservatives and around Boris Johnson. Plus, a man's been convicted of murdering the three-year-old son of his girlfriend. For LBC from Birmingham Crown Court, I'm Josh Giltran. Nick Horary at breakfast. Call 0345 6060 
Britain deserves better. They have to go. Sir Craig Oliver was Downing Street Director of Communications under Prime Minister David Cameron for a lengthy stretch five years. He now hosts the global podcast Desperately Seeking Wisdom. He joins me now. Okay, from a comms point of view, as it's called, Sir Craig, did he, to you, strike the right tone? Good morning. Good morning, Nick. Um, I think he just about got there. It's worth looking back at how they communicated this a few months ago. It was completely disastrous. They got themselves into a situation where they were trying to say, when is a party not a party, denying things. And if they'd said a few months ago what Boris actually said yesterday was, look, I made some mistakes, I'm sorry, it's not an excuse, but it is an explanation, can we move on? I suspect he wouldn't have been in the difficulties that he's faced over the last few months. I think that message does feel like it's taken quite a lot of the heat out of it. There are those who are rightly pointing out never forgive for this if they particularly if they lost loved ones during this but it does feel as if a lot of the energy is coming out of this story and i suspect boris will live to fight another day if we weren't confronted with hideous events elsewhere in europe would the pressure be that much more acute to great I think it would be more acute. The reality is what Ukraine has allowed Boris Johnson to do is, is to basically do what he does best, which is say, look, we believe in the freedom and values. He's gone to Kiev. He's given legal aid to, to the Ukrainians. And a lot of people on all sides of the political spectrum have been able to support that. And that inevitably, if you're able to play to your strengths over a period of time, that inevitably helps you. Also, the passing of time. I think one of the tactics that Boris Johnson was prepared to use was to cling on even in the most difficult circumstances and wait for something to come up and something pretty substantial did come up now a lot of people will be angry about that but that is the reality of politics his jury and execution of course i don't need to tell you would be the conservative party how much of an appetite is there to go for him currently well you're right there are two juries really aren't there there's a conservative party now because it's not going to be a general election when there is a general election, the British public will decide and then we'll see quite how bad the feeling was around this. The Conservative Party at the moment, I think there was huge anger a couple of months ago. Significant figures in the party, like Douglas uh, Ross, who's the leader of the Scottish Conservative Party, said he had to go. He yesterday took a big step back from that. And I think a lot of other people in the party feel that they're going to take a step back from that, partly from Ukraine, but partly also because if there was a leadership contest in the Conservative Party, it's not entirely clear who would replace Boris Johnson. And Conservative MPs do also factor into it their own personal considerations. And I think they're not sure where this would land if there was a leadership contest. Lastly, Sir Craig, it ain't over till it's over. There are still ongoing investigations. If we were to have found another nine minutes at the photographer's leaving party, or whatever else it might be, would that completely change the balance again? I think that there is definitely a number of situations coming up. For example, Sue Gray's report may have details in it which people find intolerable. My gut is that this has taken enough steam out of this, enough energy out of this, that when those things actually happen, they will pass with a bit of noise, but actually Boris Johnson will still be in Downing Street. Check out Sir Craig's podcast from Global, Desperately Seeking Wisdom. Sir Craig Oliver formed or had the position of Downing Street Director of Communications and the Prime Minister David Cameron for five years. I stress that because it is a, a pretty tough post to hold down, as is my next guest. Jonathan, now Lord Marlin, who is a Conservative, is a Conservative peer, served as Energy and Climate Change Minister, also a trade envoy, under Prime Minister David Cameron. Can I ask you again, uh, Lord Marlin, as someone within the party, how much of an appetite now to unseat a Prime Minister who will now have a criminal conviction? Good morning. Good morning, and may I first of all say that I think you gave a very balanced resume of this uh, clearly, uh, all of us are deeply unhappy at this, uh, these events and at the, the, the uh, unpleasant way that people have to suffer through this terrible time. And leadership, of course, does require you to behave in, in the way of the rules that you've led. So there will be deep unhappiness about uh, this behaviour. But I think your, the mitigating circumstances which you enunciated so well were that Firstly, this was a birthday party. He was in a he was in a cabinet meeting with Rishi Sunak, which is good news that they were meeting together. Um, and that uh, his wife came in with a birthday cake, which was perfectly, probably very naive, but perfectly acceptable, given, as you said, what he'd been through, and that it was indeed his birthday. I think people need to understand number ten a little bit better. It is not only a home, but it is the office of about 300 people. And that's why so many civil servants are being fined 
uh, for um, partying in, in Syria. I suspect they weren't partying many of them. I think many of them were probably having a drink after a very hard day's work. They've been at it 24-7 through the biggest crisis the country's ever known. And uh, you know, I, I suppose if one was to cut them a little bit of slack, they were letting off steam often and having a drink after work at not only the place where they had to come to work, because uh, there was so much intensity at that time, but also um, and they, you know, the, it, it is the home of the Prime Minister. You can't get away from it. There's a lot of stress, goes, lot of stress in that building. Can, can I put stress in that building? Yeah, but can I, I put think your point? Sorry, yes, yeah, sorry. No, I should just say, Lord Mother, if we turn, and let's move everybody out of this country and all the independent commentators, if we turn to Ukraine, President Zelensky has hailed Boris Johnson as the politician who is doing the most to try and confront Putin. He's undoubtedly um, awakened, and I don't mean that as a cheap gag, Joe Biden to the real problems. He's galvanized them. Surely at a time like this, notwithstanding anyone who's lost a relative, we must face to that, that enormous challenge to Ukraine and Russia. Well, you're totally right. I said that when this issue first came up, it would be wrong now to have a leadership contest for the leader of the Conservative Party, which would take six weeks of internal naval gazing when these crises are going on. And you rightly refer to uh, Ukraine. He's had a, what I would describe as a very good war so far, as indeed he did, did in the major crisis, which was uh, the vaccine uh, issue where he released this country. And I, I, the other reason I think it would be wrong to have a leadership uh, election at this point is that it, these aren't the only crises. The, these crises have caused two major future events. One is that which we're uh, uh, incurring now, which is the energy crisis, and then there is going to be the cost of living crisis, all caused by COVID and now Ukraine. And these issues have to be dealt with. And I do think uh, the Prime Minister has um, handled them so far extremely well, and on these he will be judged. Grateful for your time. Thank you. In two miles, at Junction 3, take the A312 exit to Harrow. Hayes. There really is no, I don't think there's any grey area, we'll hear what you have to say. There are other stories, the hunt for the Brooklyn gunman. Police in New York name a person of interest as the hunt continues for a gunman who injured at least 23 people on the subway yesterday. I'm William Denslow with a live report from New York. And in the next hour, exclusive interview with David now, Lord Frost, the man who you might recall when it came to signing the Brexit deal. Sign it, David, just sign it, that was the Prime Minister's command. I think that uh, David Frost, Lord Frost, is doing an outstanding job, and I, I, I venture to say Mr. Speaker, he is the greatest Frost since the great Frost of 1709. 9, 6, 9, 7, 16, I think it was the Prime Minister confusing, but 9 at the last minute, 7, 16, LBC News headline, Simon Conway. Despite pressure to resign, Boris Johnson and Rishi Sunak say they want to get on with their jobs after they were fined for breaching Covid rules. Figures just released show UK inflation increased to 7% in March from 6.2% the month before. A 62-year-old man has been named as a person of interest after a shooting at a subway station in New York. LBC weather, warm with a mix of sunshine and scattered showers for most, a high of 18 degrees. LBC travel, I'm Joanne Webb. Delays on the M25 anti-clockwise from Junction 24 at Porter's Bar to 23 at South Mims, and that's after an accident. And then also on the M25, there are anti-clockwise keys at Junction 26 at Waltham Abbey, all the way to the Holmesdale Tunnel, and that's where a car has broken down. Still very busy northbound to the Blackcord Tunnel after those emergency repair works from earlier. All the lanes are back open, but there are still delays back on to the A2. On the underground, severe delays on the Metropolitan Line between Baker Street and Allgate. Minor delays on the rest of the line and on the trains. Great Western Railway and TfL Rail services are disrupted between Paddington and Reading because of the overhead wire problems and Heathrow Express is running a reduced service. LBC. BT Superfast Fibre with World Class TV. Together for just £32.99 a month. That's our biggest ever saving of £361 on brilliant broadband and BT TV entertainment, which includes Netflix and a now entertainment membership with Sky Channels. Hurry, this amazing offer... In a quarter of a mile, at Junction 3, take the A312 exit to Harrow, Hayes. Customers, 24-month contracts, CPI plus 3.9% increase each March. £48.99 for month 25. Terms apply. Call Vic Ferrari now. 0345 6060 This is LBC. Exit at Junction 3. 
four times more orders for users with a connected store than bulk emails alone, reaching customers with the right message at the right time. And a big part of marketing a small business is... In a quarter of a mile, at Cranford Parkway Interchange, take the fourth exit onto the Parkway, A312. At Get ready, because the home-style crispy chicken is back at McDonald's. A delicious crispy chicken breast, bacon, hot and spicy mayo, and a red onion relish, all inside a glazed poppy and sesame seed bun. Delicious. Tuck in until the 26th of April. <laughs> Served after 11am. Subject to availability. Only in participating restaurants. See mcdonalds.co.uk slash homestyle crispy chicken for details. What if positive change was only one design away? With Canva, you can design anything. Whether it's a presentation to share an idea, a video to launch a business, or a social post to start a conversation. Millions of people are using Canva to redesign their own world. Some say design is beyond most people's reach. We say it's already in your hands. So, what will you design today? Start designing for free at canva.com. Hold on to your mugs. EE's Full Fiber is here. New broadband that can handle anything. And whatever you think that means, times it by a zillion and dip it in chocolate. Because this broadband connects 100 devices in your home. Search EE Full Fiber. 18.3% UK availability. Check coverage at ee.co.uk. at the roundabout onto the parkway. Continue on the parkway for one mile. of a mile at Wagoners Roundabout, take the second exit and stay on the parkway, A312.
Exit the roundabout onto the parkway. Continue on A312 for one and a half miles.